It has been stated by the CEO of Qatar Airways that if the seats were to be any better, then it would be classed as premium economy. So join me today as I fly once again from my home airport, Manchester Airport, to Doha on Qatar Airways' Boeing 787-9 Dreamliner in economy to see if the seats lives up to expectations. This is also my first time flying on a Dreamliner, so I'm excited to see how the experience is compared to other aircraft in the Qatar Airways fleet, in particular the Qatar Airways 777 that I flew back in February on this exact same route. My day started very early in the morning in Manchester. Upon arrival I could see that the queues for check-in for other airlines looked quite busy through the windows as I approached the terminal. Lucky for me though, I had arrived a bit early and so I was the first in line for my check-in. However, I did have to wait a little as the check-in staff were having their briefing, but after around 15 minutes I was sent to one of the self-check-in kiosks, which although they were a bit laggy, they were fast and got me through quickly. Hello and welcome back to another video, again from Manchester Airport Terminal 2, flying uh, today to Doha on the Qatar Airways 787-9 Dreamliner. So let's see how this experience differs from the 777. As usual, when travelling through Manchester, I purchased fast track as security is known to be quite chaotic, especially during the summer season. This can be purchased via the Manchester Airport's website and cost me £5.50 at the time of purchasing it. Security was alright, not fast, not slow, even though I did get fast track. Um, but the other queues are quite busy compared to the fast track so is it worth it could be after security i headed into duty free which is really good manchester providing a large variety of shops and restaurants however i made my way to one of the two lounges at the terminal one being the 1903 lounge and the other being the escape lounge which i spent my time in The lounge looked quite modern and it's quite new, just like the rest of the terminal, but it wasn't the largest and so it could get a bit busy and it could be difficult to find seating sometimes. However, lucky for me as I managed to have a nice seat right next to the window looking over the apron. The staff were also really kind and were willing to help you if you needed anything. The lounge offered a small selection of food consisted of an English breakfast, cereal, fruit, some sweet snacks such as cupcakes and some drinks, both hot and cold, along with the options at the bar, but compared to other lounges around the world, this wasn't anything spectacular. There was also a small section cut off from the main area dedicated to only Air France and KLM passengers using the lounge, but once again it was very small with limited seating. A good note though, that there was a screen towards the entrance showing Flight Radar 24, which is a huge positive including for an av geek like me. After some nibbles and plane spotting, I saw my aircraft taxi to its stand and so I made my way to the gate as it's a long walk. I've heard many people getting annoyed about the long walking distances of the new Terminal 2 and you can sometimes find yourself walking about 10-15 to 15 minutes to your gate and can get quite tiring and there is no buggy service like other airports in the UK like London Heathrow and other airports around the world. My aircraft taking me to Doha was one out of 18 Boeing 787-9 Dreamliners in the Qatar Airways fleet. My aircraft Alpha 7 Bravo Hotel Hotel was only about 4 years old which is quite young for an aircraft 
However, when it was first delivered in 2022, this was used as a cargo aircraft for some time before being fitted with seats not long after to fly passengers. This aircraft also includes newest seats of Casa Airways in economy class, with the CEO stating that when it was first introduced, that if it were to be any better than it would be classed as premium economy, so my standards are high for this flight. The gate for my flight was very busy and I saw that this was a full flight, which is the case with nearly all Qatar Airways flights coming out of Manchester. The aircraft consists of 281 economy seats in a classic 333 configuration, whilst the 30 business class seats in the front cabin are set out in a 121 configuration, creating a total of 311 seats. And the business class seats are the newish business suites that the airline released about two years ago. These suites were added into the aircraft to compensate for the award-winning Q suites as the 787 is only a finch too narrow for the Q suite to fit. I did manage to board sneakily so that I could get a good shot of the cabin upon boarding and I was greeted by the friendly cabin crew at the door before making my way to my seat 12k. Seats can be booked before your flight and can be either included in your tickets or else the prices can be really high, sometimes even costing up to £90 to book an extra legroom seat at the front. If you are a Casa Airways Privileged Club member, you could earn 10% off seat selection and avios can also be used to pay. When I first stepped on board, I found the aisles much tighter than usual, making the aircraft feel a little cramped, but when I got into my seats, I realised how well designed the seats were. The seats were designed in a clever way so that they are wider towards the top, giving you more space and making the seat feel wider. There was a really generous amount of legroom of 31 inches and a really good recline along with a strong adjustable headrest, which was really helpful when sleeping. However, when the seat reclines, the main bottom part of the seat moves slightly forward in a cradle-like position, but reduces the legroom. However, this is becoming more and more common with seats in economy. There was a large seat pocket with two smaller pockets, making it useful to store things during the flight. Above was a foldable tray table and behind a card reader, which is rather unusual to find nowadays, and I'm not sure why it's there. There is also a phone stand above which is really helpful if you want to watch something from your phone. Under the screen there is the usual headphone port, both a USB-A and a USB-C port, and other controls for the seat such as the car bell, lights and volume options for the screen. The seat has probably the largest in-flight entertainment system I've ever seen and is probably one of the largest ones in economy in the world, which is helped by the top part of the seat being wider. As this was my first time on a 787, I really liked the size of the windows as they were really big and also love the dimmable windows as they can stop lights from entering while still making it able to see outside. There were also individual air vents at every seat. The screen offered Qatar Airways' award-winning Oryx One entertainment system which offered an outstanding amount of movies and TV shows which was noticeably better than the flight I took in February. There were also exterior cameras which I had not seen in a long time which I love along with the small coats hook on the side of the seat which was really useful. There's also a soft blanket, a small pillow, some headphones and an amenity kit or safety kit on every seat which consisted of a face mask, some hand sanitizer and some gloves. Before I knew it, we pushed back for Doha.
just under an hour after takeoff, the crew came round with the main meal service, which was breakfast. The menu is very similar to the last flight I took with Qatar Airways in February, and can be seen up to 10 days before departure via the Qatar Airways app or the website via the booking. I opted for the waffles just like my last flight because I found them really tasty last time, whilst my auntie, who is fine with me today, opted for the egg omelette. I feel like the meal quality has gone a little downhill since I last flew them, as my waffles didn't taste as fresh and were a little bit soggy, but it still tasted just as good. I did manage to have a taste of the egg omelette. Eggs on planes are usually quite rubbery, however this is quite moist and cooks perfectly. The sausages also tasted really good, however the potatoes let the meal down as they were really undercooked. The meals both came with sides of passion fruit yogurt which didn't taste great and a small but really fresh fruit salad. There was a large choice of drinks and a croissant which looks like it had been put through a vacuum cleaner and although it tasted good with the strawberry jam, it had a lot of bits that went everywhere and made quite a mess. All in all, just like I said, I think that the meal has gone a little downhill, but these small things can easily be altered to make the meal just as good as they were last time. For the rest of the flight, I relaxed so much on the IFE and found the aircraft to be very comfortable and quiet. After the meal service, there could be quite a small wait for the lavatories, but nothing too bad. The 787-9 has 6 lavatories for economy and were quite tight compared to other aircraft such as the 777. They were cleaned every so often and included some amenities. The crew on board were really friendly with one of the crew even giving me a crew tag for my bag and they were always really willing to help me with anything if I needed. But something that I found and saw and heard before is that the 787 isn't really crew friendly, with there only being one galley at the rear for economy making the space to work relatively tight. This also reduces the time for the service to be delivered as there also isn't a galley at the second door due to there being a small bar for business class. There was also Wi-Fi available to purchase on the flight at a price of 10 US dollars for the whole flight regardless of the length of the flight. However, Privilege Club members have one hour free Wi-Fi on all flights. The connection was also strong and fast. The crew came round a few times after for tea and coffee, and around an hour and a half before landing they came round with the snack service, consisted of a grilled Mediterranean vegetable pizza or a chicken tikka pizza which I opted for. Both choices came warm and looked and tasted really good. They also came with the same choice of drinks as before. Before I knew it, we approached Doha towards late evening just before the sunset.
pulled up at a bus gate which I can't complain about as it gives me a really good chance to take some close up photos and videos of the plane. Bus drops transiting passengers off first and only a few people were left. I would say probably around 90% of the people I saw on my flights were all transiting which showed how big the hub Doha is for connecting flights. As I wasn't transiting, I stayed on the bus and went straight to passport control. The queues weren't long but it did take some time to get through. Altogether, I think that 787 Dash 9 is probably the best economy seats in the Qatar Airways fleet, and my experience would have been 10 out of 10, however, there are a few small things that can be done to make the experience better. I feel like the prices to choose your own seats must be lowered because the prices are too high and are really unreasonable. It also must have been just a one off, but the meals on board didn't taste as good as last time. With some small adjustments, this can be made better. Before I end the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and also check out my Instagram, link is in the description.